Good morning and welcome to 10 Minute Mondays. Today we are here to talk about Contact Form 7 and Power Automate and how we can integrate the two. If you're not familiar with Contact Form 7, it is WordPress's most popular plugin. Here's their, their web page. There are more than 5 million forms that are currently being powered by Contact Form 7. Today, those 5 million forms can submit a form and email you the data. And that's where it ends. So we thought it'd be wonderful to show you how you can take this super simple and powerful and I think free plugin and really ramp it up by tapping it into the Power Automate universe. So I'm here with Nick Hans, who has developed the connector between Contact Form 7 and Power Automate, and he's going to show us how it works and give a quick little demo for us. So Nick, all yours. Hey, thank you very much, Ivy. That was a great intro. I'm hoping to give a quick demo here of how everything works. So I'm going to start off with a real quick, this is a, um, this is a Contact Form 7 uh, form. It's got a bunch of different fields in it. So this one's name and this one's email, but we've got like required uh, checkbox and a drop down. Um, so I'm going to show how this all works through uh, Power Automate um, where it wasn't available before. There are actually other ways to do this. You can do it with like a webhook or something like that, um, but uh, nothing without, if you're not using the PowerForm 7 connector, it doesn't come across nearly as nicely. So to get started, it's helpful if we look at the back end. Um, the reason for that is you're going to see everything come into Power Automate with these labels um, because that's all that we can access from inside the, um, the contact form seven. It doesn't know enough about it. So you're going to have to know what these are, and that's basically just the name of the different fields. Um, so if you're building a contact form seven form, you're going to want to have those be something that you recognize. Um, the first step you'll need to do is install the plugin. And after you do that, you go into the PowerForm 7 plugin settings. Um, you'll, you can turn on and off whether or not this is enabled here. So if it is disabled, then it will not connect to Power Automate in any way. So we have a very quick, easy on off switch for it. Um, the license key to help it uh, know where the, uh, you know, it helps basically the back end server work with Power Automate. And that's what you'll use both on the, the PowerForm 7's page. Uh, the settings page here, and also when you create your connection over in Power Automate. Now, Nick, um, pardon my pardon my interruption, yeah. but I want to sure. make it clear for anybody who might be watching this video after the fact. So you're talking about Power Form Seven, which is the name of the connector in Power Automate, correct? Even though it's yes. Contact Form Seven, the name of the connector that you can search for is Power Form Seven. Yes, yeah. So we built the connector here is Power Form Seven. You can buy it on our website. Um, and this is how you connect PowerForm. PowerForm 7 is the connector between uh, Contact Form 7 and Power Automate. Um, so this is just a quick overview of how it works. You'll select the, um, the account that's going to be used for it. So that's basically, this is a WordPress user that PowerForm 7 is going to use the site as. It just needs to be able to, to read the Contact Form 7 uh, forms. So if you create a new user, you'll need to pick that user here that has access to Contact Form 7. So with all of that out of the way, let's get right into a demo. This is a new flow page. So this is the, the very first thing. Um, you can see I don't have a trigger in there yet. So we're gonna search for Power Form 7. And um, here we'll do when a Contact Form 7 form is submitted. I already have my connection configured. So we're gonna pick the WordPress site and this one is the reenhance.com site. And then it's going to list every single form on the site. Um, I just have one, so we're just going to select that. And um, then we're going to need to do something with it. So this one is when a contact form seven form is submitted. Um, we can do everything that we would possibly want to do with it. Um, from here, I think, um, you know, we're just going to, um, we'll just do a very quick email. This is not something you'd probably want to do because obviously contact form seven already does email. Um, but as a demo, just so I can show you how it works, um, we're just going to do you know, a quick little uh, thing here. And all right, so the mail isn't working, but we're just going to put in my own email here. And um, 
So from here now, you can see where we're able to put in dynamic values. So this is where the magic of contact form seven comes in. Any other solution you'd build wouldn't be able to get you the different field names here. So it's very easy to see that, you know, has submitted a form. Um, so now we're going to save the flow and um, the flow is now active. So we're going to go back to the form here and um, we're going to put in all the details. And um, once it goes through and um, I forget which of these are required and which aren't, so I'm going to fill <laughs> all of them out. So this has a, a whole bunch of different field option types here. Um, and this is just uh, I guess probably a phone number or something like that. And I don't remember what that one is. Um, we'll take a look real quick. I did a very quick sort of thing. So that one's the phone number. The first one is the URL. So I'm going through this kind of quickly. You can see this is just a test one. Yours would actually label what these are. Um, so this one needs to be a URL. And this one needs to be a phone number. And so now if I hit send, you'll see that it either is, okay, so it says it's been sent correctly. So if we come back, um, and actually I have the message came through already. So here you can see that it came from Power Automate and it went through everything. So it's, it's working perfectly here. Um, and we can go and see the runs here and you'll see that it, the flow ran, ran successfully. So that's great. Um, and you'll be able to see that it works and you can pass all the values through, but there's more. So you can actually do this in reverse. So if we were to change this flow completely and, um, and we just made it a, a manual flow, then um, what we can do is we can actually submit the form. So um, we can do the whole process in reverse. So you can use Power Form 7 to submit a contact Form 7 form. Um, so you have to do the same thing, pick the site, and then pick the um, pick the contact form, and then give it a second, and it will pull out all the fields. So now you have the ability to fill out contact forms from inside of Power Automate to go you know, either direction with it. You can either act as a trigger for, so that when the form is submitted, you can do something with it, or you can go to any WordPress website, install the Power Form 7 plugin, and you can fill all of this out. Um, so I'll give a quick demo here and um, same sort of thing. And uh, one thing to show off here is that it's getting all the all the values for the drop downs as well. So, um, you know, it's not like a, a thing where you have to guess that it's just very simple, very straightforward, and it marks which ones are required and which ones aren't. So um, we can save this and I'm actually going to test it. And it's going to run. And then when it runs, I'll get an email from contact form seven. So we're going to watch it run. So you'll, if you're familiar with Power Automate, you'll see that run. And um, let's check the values here. Here it is. So this is it coming from the website. I didn't fill any of that stuff out, so it's not very helpful. Um, but <laughs> that came from the Power Automate um, flow, everything works both directions. Um, so very quick, very easy way to work with Contact Form 7 inside of Power Automate. Um, there's over 5 million uh, Contact Form 7 installations, and now you can use it with over 400 different connectors. Yeah, that's really neat. Thanks for the demo, Nick. Can we talk a little bit about some potential use cases? I know you were just demoing in the interest of time email, but you know, yeah. just, front of mind since my background's all dynamics the first thing i'm thinking of is this is great someone can put a contact form seven up as a lead generation tool when they hit yeah. submit it could get pushed into dynamics as a lead and you could even take it a step further since we're talking power automate and maybe throw an approval check in there before you want to build it as a lead so yeah. it's pretty neat and then 
a, you know, another different angle, you could integrate it with teams and then you can access people outside of the dynamics world if they're pre-qualifying leads and then you want to push it to sales teams. So, well, yeah. And think about, think about WordPress being as popular as it is. Microsoft has their portals thing, which they want you to use, but the line is going to get really blurry there. Now you can, you can use this with your dynamics entities and you have this more free flow sort of thing between it. Um, and you can go both directions. So if you're working with known vendors and you wanted to automate this, you can install the plugin on their site and then use it in that direction. Um, you probably mm -hmm. use a UI flow for that, but it was simple enough to go bi-directional with it that I thought people might want to have the ability to do that. Um, but you're right, using it with Dynamics is very helpful um, and you know, getting the data into Dynamics in any way you can is, is helpful. Great. Um, any future updates you're going to be making to the PowerForm 7 connector, or is that still yes. in the works? Yes. So it doesn't yet support file attachments, um, and that's because it, uh, like a small technical reason on the on the back end of how Contact Form 7 works with it. Um, but I do want to support file attachments um, so that we can do that. And then I have this this grand vision of um, being able to use it with the option set, so the drop down values. I really want to be able to have it so you can you can coordinate those option set values with what you have inside of Dynamics because so many times you're going to be using an option set and you have this this ridiculously painful mapping process between you know a drop down on your website and a value inside of Dynamics and they're different because of you know deep technical reasons. Mm -hmm. And there shouldn't be. So I really want to update this so that we can solve that problem for good and do it at scale. Great. That sounds exciting. And I think we're just about out of time. So thank you so much. And if anyone has any questions, can I get in touch with you after watching this? Yeah, you saw my email address there a couple of times, but uh, it's enhance at reenhance.com. But thank you, Heidi. This has been great. All right. Thanks, everybody. And we'll see you next week. Thank you. Hi.